SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation is a powerful computational fluid dynamics analysis application. One of the features that make it so powerful is the ability to run parametric studies. Parametric studies are a great way to experiment with different scenarios and optimize your design to meet your desired goal. In this study, we're examining a piston valve. Water enters the valve at the inlet and moves axially towards the orange piston. Pressure builds on the piston, which is held in force with a spring, until the pressure is large enough to move the piston. This spring requires a force of 6 newtons before it will move enough to allow the water to exit through the outlet holes. For the purpose of this experiment, we are assuming the water is entering the valve assembly at 2 bar and the pressure at the outlet is 1 bar. The goal is to determine the optimum position of the piston to produce the force of 6 newtons given the specified pressure values. Fortunately, this assembly is symmetric about two planes, which allows us to make use of symmetry during the study. There are three types of parametric studies available to us within SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, and we will examine each of them one by one. One-dimensional optimization, or goal optimization, is one of the simplest ways to arrive at our optimal position for our piston. The flow simulation study will run through numerous iterations during which a specified goal is calculated and compared to a target goal. Flow simulation will continue to run iterations until the target goal is met or the maximum number of iterations is reached. To begin this type of optimization, we'll start a new parametric study. We will then need to specify what type of parametric study we'd like to define. Next, we will add the parameter we wish to vary within our parametric study. In this case, we're attempting to find the optimal position of the piston, which is defined via a distance mate within this assembly. We can set a desired range for the variation of this parameter as well. In addition to the parameter, we will also need to specify a goal. In this case, the goal that will drive this parametric study will be the force in the x-direction on the four faces of the piston that will come in contact with our water flow. A target value is required for this goal, as well as the target deviation. Since we have four faces, we'll divide the 6 newton force by 4. We can also specify output parameters, which will tell us the final value of the goal that was used to drive this parametric study. This is important as we allowed a small amount of variation. If you're limited on time, you can specify the maximum number of iterations the parametric study will run. Once we're satisfied with the setup, we can run the study. Once completed, we can see that our solution has converged after only three iterations. This is because our target goal is now within our specified range, given our target value and maximum deviation. We can see that the force value is 1.38 newtons, which would equate to a 5.52 newton spring force. In addition, we can see that the optimal value for the distance mate is now 4.8 millimeters. This design point can be used to create a new flow simulation project with a new value for our distance mate. This allows us to load our results and plot them.
Here we can see the distribution and vectors for the fluid velocity. Our maximum velocity is about 19 meters per second. We can also examine the surface parameters to double check the force on the faces of the piston. The normal force we see here, 1.6 newtons, is close to the goal of 1.5 newtons and within the 1.2 to 1.8 newton convergence criterion range. Another type of parametric study available to us in flow simulation is known as a multivariable design or what-if scenario. This allows us to run many iterations with several varying parameters. This type of parametric study does not necessarily serve to optimize any of those parameters to meet a goal, but rather allows us to study trends of certain results and their dependence on the parameters. For our first input variable, we will choose the same dimension within the distance mate that dictates the position of the piston. This time, Rather than specifying a range, we will specify discrete values. For the second input variable, we will vary the input pressure. We will specify a range of 1.3 to 2 bar, but we will also limit the number of discrete values to 3. This will then give us values of 1.3, 1.65, and 2 bar. For our output parameters, we are once again concerned with the force in the x direction acting upon our piston faces. When we select the Scenario tab, we can see the 12 design points created by the combinations of our input variables. You'll notice that we can also adjust the number of maximum simultaneous runs to two in this case. On faster computers, that can help speed up the calculation process. Once we've set that, we can now run the study. Once the iterations have calculated, we can see the results. In this case, we can observe that our minimum value for the piston force was 0.75 newtons if we consider this force acting on all four phases, and our maximum value was 7.99 newtons. In our case, these extreme values occurred in design points 1 and 12, but it's important to note that in general, they could have occurred in the other design scenarios given differing conditions. Each of these design points represents a saved flow simulation study, and those studies could be activated if we needed to dive deeper into their results. Our final type of parametric study is a multi-parameter optimization, or in flow simulation, a design of experiments and optimization. This parametric study creates a response surface of the results based on our input variables. You can think of this almost as a three-dimensional plot. This response surface can then be interpreted to target optimal values. Once again, we are attempting to find the optimum position of the piston to result in a spring force of six newtons. So we will use the distance mate dimension as our first input variable.
we'll specify a range of 0 0.003 meters to 0 0.006 meters. We will also vary the input pressure as we did in the last study. We also need to set our output parameters, and once again, we will use the force in the x direction acting on the faces of the piston. We will also set our number of experiments to 10. In general, a larger number of experiments will produce a more accurate response surface, but will take more time. These experiments will be automatically generated once we choose Create. We were then ready to run the optimization study. Once the study has completed, we can then use the Find Optimum tool to find the minimum of the piston force. We can use the same technique to find the maximum. This will output a design point corresponding to the minimum and the maximum of the output parameters. Finally, we can also use this technique to find a combination of the input variables, which results in a target value of six newtons divided amongst the four faces, or one and a half newtons. In our results, we can see that the optimum force of 1.5 newtons occurs when the dimension of the piston is at 5.8 millimeters, and the pressure is at 1.78 bar. Since these results are simply interpreted from the response surface, a new flow study would need to be generated from these input parameters and solved to see more accurate results. By using these three types of parametric studies, we were able to analyze a complex problem and quickly test numerous input values to determine the optimal design. This greatly sped up the analysis process and required less iterations with repetitive manual input. Using optimization, SOLIDWORKS flow simulation becomes one of your most powerful design tools when it comes to analyzing designs in which fluid flow is important.